Let's imagine for a moment that the future of internal combustion doesn't lie in whatever half-hearted attempt the big car makers are calling sustainable, but instead in a two-cylinder engine no larger than a microwave, weighing less than 50 kilograms and running equally well on hydrogen, jet fuel, bioethanol and just about any synthetic fuel available to put in your car. And somehow, despite being a two-stroke, a layout most engineers now treat with the same disdain as asbestos, it's managing thermal efficiencies north of 50%. That's higher than most diesel lorries, and it doesn't require black magic. It's called the Rev Force, and it's built by a group of mad scientists in Michigan. And yes, it might just be the most important engine in development today. And to understand why, you have to forget what you know about combustion. Because what's happening inside this engine isn't combustion the way most people think of it. No, what Alpha Auto is doing is more akin to a high pressure chemistry experiment. Controlled detonation everywhere all at once. So, at the heart of this technological wonder sits a 48 kilogram inline two cylinder two stroke engine. But don't be fooled by that humble configuration. This isn't a chainsaw engine, it's a precision instrument designed for UAV propulsion. It makes 127 kilowatt or 170 horsepower and is designed to go 2000 hours before overhauling. Internally, it features a port injected, liquid cooled design, but with the crown jewel being its patented rotary exhaust valve, the REV. This isn't just a fancy flap at the tailpipe. This rotating mechanism controls back pressure, timing and scavenging with surgical precision. It creates what the designers call a dynamically variable compression cycle, effectively letting them decide how much charge stays in the cylinder and when it gets the boot. That rotary valve is now servo actuated through a planetary gear mechanism for full variable valve timing over 360 degrees, giving the engine what is essentially a continuously variable exhaust event. No cam lobes, no timing belts, just clean digital control. The result, while you can face the scavenging, EGR and even create Atkinson-like cycles by altering the exhaust closing phase. Not only is this clever, it's utterly necessary for what the engine is actually doing inside. Because where it really earns its keep is in its combustion process. A little something Alpha Auto calls low temperature combustion. You see, low temperature combustion or LTC is not a marketing buzzword here. It's the fundamental operating principle. The goal is to achieve diffused combustion, where instead of igniting a pocket of fuel, air mixture, and watching the flame front crawl across the chamber, the entire mixture ignites more or less simultaneously. Think of it as lighting a room with a wall switch rather than a single match. To do this, Alpha Auto focuses on a few tightly choreographed stages, air preconditioning, turbulence, injection, combustion and exhaust control. Each one plays a role in getting the air and fuel mixture just right so that it all ignites at once, at lower than normal temperatures and without forming hotspots that cause knock or soot. The result is diesel-like efficiency, but without the downsides coming from diesel engines. No clattering injection pressures, no soot traps and no knock scandals. So the first stage is almost beautiful in its complexity, air doesn't just come in the front and go bang. No, it enters through a variable throttle. It's compressed by a belt-driven screw-type supercharger chosen for its ability to generate heat and pressure at low speeds, and then it's passed through a heat exchanger that can either cool it or heat it, depending on whether the engine is aiming for maximum power or maximum efficiency. A bypass loop allows some of that air to be recycled, creating a tailored pressure temperature cocktail. All of this, by the way, is done independently of the engine's crankshaft position. How? Well, there's a boost pressure bypass valve, which can redirect the supercharged and cooled air back to the throttle to control or meter how much of the pre-cooled air reaches the combustion chamber. 
and how much gets cycled and fed back into the compressor. It's a completely independent air pump, and that gives you real-time computer-controlled charge density, management. You get to decide what air goes in, how fast, how hot, and how much. The piston just compresses it. Once air is delivered into the cylinder, it's not just sitting there politely. The internal port geometry creates an intense wraparound motion, a sort of inverted tornado that throws the mixture upward, around and back down into the combustion pocket. Why does this matter? Well, there's this thing called charge motion. Now in engine talk, charge means the air fuel mix in the cylinder before ignition. Charge motion is just a fancy way of saying how much energy and movement that air has inside the combustion chamber, at the exact moment you light the spark. And this is this engine's secret weapon for burning fuel properly. Imagine stirring a thick soup. The more you stir, the better the ingredients mix and the smoother the soup tastes. Same thing here. You want that air and fuel to be moving and swirling inside the cylinder to mix perfectly. This swirling or turbulence helps the flame spread quickly and evenly once the spark heats. Without it, you get patches where the mixture is richer or leaner, which can cause rough running or even worse, knocking. Now in a typical four-stroke engine, the air is drawn in during the intake stroke as the piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center and then compresses on the way back up. But here's the problem. The air slows down as it goes through the poppet valves. By the time it settles into the combustion chamber, it's lost a lot of its energy. So the natural swirling or turbulent motion is weaker and the air just kind of sits there, almost dead calm. Alpha Auto's engineers said, let's fix that. Their supercharger pumps air into the cylinder with a precise angle and timing to maximize the kinetic energy of the air. Instead of waiting for a whole 360 degrees of crank rotation to suck air in like a normal four stroke, they cram it all in during less than 180 degrees, right at the bottom of dead center when the piston is at its lowest. This means the air comes in fast, full of energy, and the piston starts compressing immediately after the air starts entering. By igniting just before piston hits TDC, they preserve that swelling motion right up until combustion begins. Then the piston crown, the dome shaped top of the piston, is shaped carefully to deflect incoming air upwards and around inside the chamber. The crown shape helps the fresh air sneak past the exhaust port and swirl up into the chamber, boosting turbulence and charge motion. Alpha Auto's engineers call back to all two-stroke piston designs with wings that deflect air for similar reasons. But here the design is even more precise because the piston has to manage both fresh air in and exhaust gases out in perfect harmony. The final piece to how this thing pulls in air comes in how long the intake valve stays open as well as when the exhaust opens. Alpha Auto System controls these timings precisely to manage how the air moves, how much turbulence is generated and how the fuel air mix. Getting things right took tons of computational fluid dynamic simulations. Basically, virtual wind tunnel testing to perfect the shapes, angles and timings that produced the best possible turbulent charge motion. Okay, so now we've got air covered. Let's talk fuel. Now the engine uses four port injectors and two direct injectors. Yes, this thing has six injectors on a two cylinder engine. But this is done for a reason. Port injection handles most fuels beautifully, especially when the timing and targeting are right. In fact, Alpha Auto has found it so effective at creating mixtures that DI is almost redundant, except for when JP8 or gasoline type fuels are needed in military contexts. Their preferred port injection angle sprays directly into the cylinder head pocket, letting it mix while the intake port is open, capitalizing on that peak turbulence. It's technically still upstream, but it behaves like DI. 
They've even used transparent cylinder heads and ribbons inside combustion chambers to visualize flow paths and optimize the mix. This is real science, not guesswork. For full military spec operations, especially on kerosene type fuels, they're developing a mechanical DI system that sidesteps the fragility of electric injectors and avoids wall washing and poor atomization. But again, port injection remains the favorite because it's cheap, reliable, and thanks to the diffused combustion, doesn't need the pressure and complexity of modern DI systems. Anyways, onto the fun bit, combustion. So once air and fuel are in and mixed, and the piston begins to squeeze it, combustion happens in one of two ways. Either it auto-ignites, thanks to perfect LTC conditions, effectively homogeneous charge compression ignition, or it gets a nudge from a spark plug. But why? I mean, the whole idea with this thing is that it can ignite everything even without a spark plug. But you see, the spark plug is necessary when aiming for peak power. At such speeds, diffused combustion becomes difficult to manage. And a spark plug in the cylinder head pocket kicks in to continue power output until operations return from peak power to peak efficiency mode. This spark assisted auto ignition is vital for real world fuels, which vary wildly in quality and purity. Even so called 87 octane varies by region, and hydrogen purity drops costs dramatically. But only if you can tolerate impurities that make combustion unpredictable. The Rev Force tolerates that uncertainty by keeping the spark plug as a backup ensuring ignition happens even when the mixture isn't textbook perfect. But now let's move on to the fancy bit. So once combustion is over, the rotary exhaust valve or the REV becomes the maestro. Unlike a poppet valve or expansion port, it controls when, how much and how quickly gases leave the chamber. It's backed by a servo controlled butterfly valve downstream, creating back pressure to trap exhaust valves or force them out as needed. This control allows for retained heat, maintained chamber temperatures, and full charge conditioning before the next cycle. That kind of fine-tuned exhaust management is what makes low temperature combustion sustainable cycle after cycle. The planetary gear system allows for full variable exhaust timing, enabling everything from efficiency focused Atkinson cycles to full bore high power modes for emergency acceleration. What does all of this mean? Well, here's what all of that complexity buys you. For one, an engine that only weighs 48 kilograms whilst producing 170 horsepower. That's an amazing power to weight ratio. But it's not only fast, it's efficient too. Depending on the fuel and mode, it delivers thermal efficiency numbers of 42 to 52 percent. That's double what other petrol combustion motors deliver, and it's on par with diesel engines. But without NOx. Speaking of fuel, this engine supports hydrogen, JP8, gasoline, kerosene, and biofuels. All of this just means that this engine is super adaptable, really powerful, and most importantly, in our current world, green. But to end this video off, the Alpha Auto Reforce isn't just a new engine. It's a rethink of the entire combustion cycle, engineered from scratch to achieve what used to be contradictory, high power and high efficiency, low emissions and high fuel flexibility two-stroke simplicity with F1-like control. It's the Swiss army knife of propulsion systems. And unlike most futuristic designs, it's already running on test benches, producing data and offering production-ready variants. It's messy, complex, and a bit mad, which frankly makes it brilliant. But yeah, at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys think of the Rare Force engine. Um, there is a lot of information in this video and if anything didn't make sense I really urge you to go and read article I, I, I think I'm gonna try and put it in the description where this website did like an interview with the people from Rare Force where they really really 
go in depth on how this thing works so i'm gonna leave that in the description and you guys can go and read that as well but yeah i hope this video gave you an insight in this engine i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys did enjoy it please leave a like and subscribe to the channel now if you guys did like this video you must really enjoy most of my other stuff so just go through my channel see if there's something else to like i'll check you guys in the next one cheers eh?